I, I was thinking during this, I, I'm, a, I'm cocooned given my age, and I was thinking about that lock, lock-in that's happening, and lock-ins of a sort. And uh, a, few, a few years ago, during Stramophilia, I was locked in for a night in Claire Morris, and we had a great night as a result in a hotel. But uh, I'm thankful to Dennis Lee Han. He writes for the farm exam on a Thursday. He writes light-hearted stuff, and I'm thankful to him for the start of this, of this story and for the ending of it. But in between, I have a second. There's, there's a story within a story, I suppose. Um, there was an old man that lived uh, in the, somewhere within the triangle. I'm not going to say exactly where he was from now. He was somewhere in the equilateral triangle that's created by McCroom. Bandon and Dunmanway. And uh, it's just somewhere within that triangle. And he was a good 82 years of age the day the storm of failure was threatened. And he heard about all the people west along and southwest along that were troubled by storm of failure. And he was worried about his hay shed that was built when he was a young fella. You know, the type, uh, Paddy, the uh, six ray, six used rails, uprights, and a nice curved roof on top. Now, it was pretty useless by the time he was 82 years of age, but he liked it a lot. And he said, you know what, I better secure the, the roof for myself. And at 82 years of age, against all of the pleadings of his family and his grandchildren and his neighbours and their grandchildren, he climbed up onto the roof, uh, uh, armed with several bats of rope. And he set about tying down the roof. Well, he had several pieces of rope tied on in the four corners of the roof when Ophelia arrived. And Ophelia huffed and puffed, and in no time at all, it, he, he hadn't quite secured the ropes uh, to, to the uprights. Didn't it lift the roof and the old man clean off the six rails? Well, I'm telling you, that was a bit of a shock for the 82-year-old old man. But he, you know what he did? He, he kind of lay down on his belly on the roof and he noticed that with the dint of wind and the and storm of failure, he was being carried around the neighbourhood and he started pulling at ropes and he began to notice that if he took out his backside a small bit, she would elevate for him. And if he took out his belly a little bit, she would drop down for him. And if he pulled the left rope, it would go around in an anti-clockwise circle and invite likewise if he pulled the right hand rope. And in no time he tall, he was surveying the neighbours' places and who had who had the silage banked up nicely and who had the new had the cattle and whose whose pony was after breaking into the neighbour's place. And he said, you know, when I'm up here at all, I might as well take an old spin around the place. And he took a look one north northwest and he look, took a look northwest and he saw McCroom, took a look southwest and he saw Dunmanma and it, it looked to the east and he saw Bandon. And he says, Do you know something? He tipped his cap as he was passing over uh, Bern the Blah in honour of the General Michael Collins, of whom he was a great admirer. And he took a spin, wished along then to, to kill Michael, and away down with him, and says he to himself. It was a long time since I had this, since I saw the ocean. He steered her southwest, and in no time at all, he was down over Balnascarty. And he tipped the other side of the cap to, to uh, Henry Ford as he passed over the model uh, down in the village. And he headed out for Inchidani, a place that he greatly admired before it was commercialized. And it, as he was, there was no helicopter there the day that he was, that he was flying over. Now, Starmophili was blowing fairly hard at the time. And, you know, it crossed his mind. Wasn't this where the American bomber landed in 1943? And he took he took a small swing to the to the to the to the port side, so to speak, and he brought the 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 the, the, the contrivance over the town of Clonakilty, and he said he thought back on the story of the American bomber that that got lost over the uh, Celtic Sea on its way from Mar Marrakesh in Morocco. I suppose you know the story, but in case you don't, I'll tell you. It was the time of the war, 1943, the 7th of April. The, the American bomber had left a, 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 an air force base in, in America. 
And in, our, in, our, in order to cross to England, they took a circuitous route. They went south to Brazil first, where <coughs> there was 10 on the crew they took on <coughs> as a kind of a mascot. They took on a Brazilian uh, spider monkey. And they flew east in, or northeast, I suppose you'd call it, to Morocco, and they landed in Marrakesh, where they took on another American fellow that was, that was a kind of a secret agent. And from there, after fueling up and stuff, they headed north for England. But on the way, whatever became, it was a big, big, it was a big plane, I'm telling you, you know, it was called a flying fortress. Aren't the Americans great for the fancy words? A flying fortress. I'd say their president would love to be letting a word like two words like that pass his lips these days. Whatever happened, the poor navigator, he got lost between the northern coast of Spain and the southern coast of the, the, the islands that make up Britain and Ireland. And where did, they, did he hit land? Only off the mizzen head. And whatever came over him, he was sure that he was in German-occupied Norway. I'm telling you, that put the hair standing on the whole crew because he, they didn't want to be landing in Norway. But they made their way along and, they, and the pilot was saying, you know what, lads, we're running out of fuel. Well, he didn't quite say it like that, no. He, he, but he did say, lads, we're badly off for fuel. We'll have to land. Well, they came east along the coast and they saw, he saw the town of Clonakilty, not knowing where it was. And he circled around looking for a place to land. Now, the people of Clonakilty heard this noise up in the sky. And they all started looking up to their own dinner time on a Wednesday. They all started, it was half day in Clannacilty, they all started looking up at this thing going around and around and around the town. And as people would be wondering, they, they, they heard about bombers and places like Belfast and Dublin being bombed. I'm telling you, they, they paid attention. But there were, uh, peop some people didn't know what it was. And one of them asked a neighbour of mine, Corney Conconney. Corney was a kind of a wise man. And my neighbor, my, uh, the, the ladies of the town and the, and the young men says, what's that, Courtney? And Courtney looked up. He was a kind of a cool dude, uh, if they had that expression at the time. He took a few pulls out of the pipe as he followed the flight of the airplane around over, over, over Tony Guilty. Well, he says, I don't know what it is, but taint aboard. <laughs> and the plane got that name. Uh, all through its lifetime, because its lifetime became more interesting by the minute. They landed in a bog not far from the town, to be somewhere no short distance from the town on the road to, in, in Shidani, in a place called Mar uh, White's Marsh. And uh, the youngest man was put out, out the door and down the steps, fully armed, expecting German interventions. When the local man, Eddie Collins, happened to be passing, and at British Gion and Eddie Collins to see this thing landing in, in, in White's Marsh or White's Bog. So the American uh, addressed the local man, Eddie Collins, and he said, do you speak English? <laughs> now ask you a question of a West Cork man, uh, 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 you, you shouldn't expect a, a straight answer. Eddie didn't answer at all except by a nod. No, that didn't help the American much, but I was proud of Eddie Collins for being so um, uh, circumspect in his answer. And uh, the American says, um, where am I? Where are you, says Eddie. He spoke then. Where do you think you are? You're I'm sure White's bog. Well, it, it calmed things a little bit, and the Americans realized that they were in an English-speaking area that was not German-occupied in any case. They were arrested in no time at all by the defence forces and they were incarcerated, so to speak, in O'Donovan's Hotel in Tanakilti. Now, I forgot to tell you that along the way in, in, in Brazil, they took on a sort of a mascot, a, a Brazilian uh, monkey, a spider monkey, and he was their mascot all the way. But, and he was brought into Tanakilti with them. Well, they were regaled and, in, and they enjoyed three or four days in Clannacilty like they never had in their lives before. And didn't the poor crater of a monkey, he expired, he died. They said he got pneumonia from the altitude 
or perhaps it was the change in climate that he, when he landed in Clonakilty, the dampness and the coolness of the April day got him. Well, I'm telling you, they were so attached to him that they gave him a, a, a sort of a military funeral. And he was buried at the back of the hotel, or Donovan's Hotel in Clonakilty, with full military honours. Well, I'm telling you, the crowd of the people of the town came and paid respects to, to Tojo before he was interred. And there was drink flowing, I'm reliably told. Drink flowing. For four days. At which point, you know, the plane was blown in White Smash, at which point the, uh, the ten uh, uh, American uh, Air Force men and their passenger they had taken on in Marrakesh were whisked off up country and they, they crossed the border into British occupied six counties and that was the last Ireland ever heard of them. And uh, that's, the, that's the, the, the story about whites and when the old man thought about all of that and he noticed about the, uh, the, 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 the emergency landing, he said to himself, I'd better head for home. Well, he swung her north and he, and he, he lay back and gained altitude and the wind helped him, I'm telling you. And what, you know, the way yachtsmen would be able to tack as they were going across the winds, he was able to tack, uh, and he never knew of tacking at all, all the way until he was circling over his home place, somewhere in that equilateral triangle that's made up of Bandon and Dunmanwe and McCroom, the town that never reared a fool. Well, I'm telling you folks, he squared up to the six po po uh, rails and he said to himself, I wonder, would I? And between sticking out his backside and pushing out his belly and pulling the right rope and the left rope, didn't he land the, the roof of the corrugated iron shed square down on the six rails and it was secured to this very day. Wasn't that some going? Good luck to you now. <laughs>